We've all been asked to verify our identity to a website. Essentially, the website wants us to prove that we're humans and not robots. They may show us this bent out of shape, somewhat grainy image of a word, and we're supposed to figure out what the letters are spelling out. Sometimes these things are quite hard. Um, there might be a word where we try to figure out is this the letter N turned sideways, or maybe it's the letter Z turned sideways. Recently, these puzzles are getting more and more annoying. You first have one word puzzles, now you have two word puzzles. Then they started showing us these grids of nine photos and we're asked to identify objects in these photos, such as uh, buses and sometimes it's like uh, sidewalks and storefronts and bicycles and so on. And some of these things are whack a -mote. You click on one, you think you've found that bus. That photo disappears only to be replaced by yet another photo that they want you to uh, identify. The most annoying ones make you go through three or four rounds of this image recognition task before you are allowed to enter. Websites make us sweat because it's just too easy for machines to break into online accounts that are protected only by passwords. Technically, these puzzles are called captures. And what computer scientists have done is to find tasks that are very difficult for computers and robots to accomplish, um, but human beings can do these things with relative ease. By and large, these captures really do work. When I first launched Principal Analytics Prep's website, um, my training company for data analytics, we had a web form where users can come ask us questions. Within a few days after we launched the website, we haven't even advertised it, nobody knows about it yet. We already got dozens of submissions. They're all fake submissions by robots. These have real looking email addresses, but definitely fake names, which consist of in unintelligible strings of alphabets and letters. After the capture was put on the website, all these fake submissions vanished. There is something peculiar about this capture business. We are humans who are trying to convince a machine that we are not the machine. So the machine is the judge of how human we are. Isn't that odd? The inventor of capture is Louis von Hahn, who is a computer science professor at Carnegie Mellon University. Capture and the more complex variant known as recapture were both bought by Google, and Professor von Ahn won many awards for this invention. In the machine learning universe, the capture invention is celebrated for something completely different, which I bet most of you have never heard of. By doing all those puzzles, all of us have unknowingly been providing free labor to the tech companies to advance their data science and AI algorithms. Take the recapture as an example. You're given two bent out of shape words that you need to decipher. Here's the surprise. It turns out that the machine actually doesn't know both of those words. The machine only knows one of them. The other word is a word that the computer science researchers have found that it's a big challenge for machines to figure out. So what Professor von Ahn is banking on is two things. One, because we're trying to get into our account, we are going to give an honest effort to whatever task is presented to us. And two, if we're able to get the first word correct, there's a very high chance that we're also getting the second word correct. So what he does is he will show that second word to a very large number of users and then we'll assume that the average response is the correct response. This is sometimes called the wisdom of the crowd. Uh, it's basically the same as the contestant on Who's a Millionaire who's using that Ask the Audience Lifeline. The two-word puzzle is actually part of Google's massive book scanning project. And that grid of nine photos that we're asked to find objects in, 
generates data for Google's self-driving car project. Both of these projects are major machine learning projects. To train a machine to figure out that a photo contains a bus, we have to feed that machine millions of images of buses. So how do these companies find millions of images of buses? In the past, they would hire cheap labor and have them scour through many, many millions of images and tag those that contain buses. And then you have to repeat the same exercise for the bicycles, for the storefronts, for the sidewalks, and so on. One of the reasons why Capture and Recapture have been such big hits in the tag community is because all of us have been silently recruited to be part of the workforce that generate data sets for all of these algorithms um, under that pretext of online account verification. So now you know why you are doing all those puzzles. And that's the end of another episode of Fun With Data. If you like what you heard today, please like our video, subscribe to our channel, and spread the word. Please also send us any ideas you have about future topics as we demystify the world of data and algorithms. Comment your ideas below. Principal Analytics Prep. Prepping you for the data revolution.